even before the current ownership of Studio Designer, um, I was able to consult with the original owner and creator of Studio Designer, which was formerly Studio Webware, and even prior to that, Studio Desktop, okay? For those of you that are super old school. Um, I've been a certified consultant for this company for over a decade. I know their software in and out, best practices, and I'm actually on most of the really early on tutorials, okay? In these next series of videos, I basically give you all the tools that you need to successfully own, operate, and manage your interior design or architect firm, okay? I include step-by-step -step processes for just about everything from setting up a brand new studio designer account, um, the process for project management and what that looks like, and the best practices for accounting and maintaining the books that we've set up. So now that I've set up all the items that I want to use in the foyer, I wanted to point out that I made sure to include a couple items with the clone that I showed you earlier and with multiple components. Now, what that means to you in, and the ease of use in studio is that we have the ability to show or hide the different items, okay? And I'm gonna use this one. This is the custom upholstered bench. I'm gonna go ahead and use this one for the sake of what we're doing, okay? So right now, if I wanted to, um, send this to the client or or pdf it okay i want to show you that this screen pops up and when you have first component selected it's going to be actually before i show you that i do want to bring you down to the bottom because i want you to see the pricing okay now i did say that these images were on the large side i typically use maybe the 100 um, pixel images um but you can use whichever one you want I just wanted to point at the bottom the fact that this bench is going to cost two thousand eight sixty three fifty one. You can see that it is comprised of both components. Now, if I were to select to use first component, and this would work even if we had, you know, more than two components, it would work for however many that you add to it, assuming that your numbering and components are correct and accurate. Okay, so now you can see that this particular proposal still has the same pricing. The only difference is that you now can see that it's just com compiled into one item. These are times where I may choose to add the fabric to the first item. That's why I, I won't name or, or uh, describe the first component item in a way that that would not make sense if we hit everything. So that's why I always will typically use the fabricator as the first component, okay? Um, if there's any questions or that's not clear for whatever reason, uh, be sure to drop me a line, okay? So I am going to go back and show you the instance where I did put the image of the fabric on this one. So this is one other proposal that we can call up and you can see that it is composed of two items here, 668.92 for this pillow. Okay, and what that would look like to our client under first component is this, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and make the image smaller again. Okay, some people just like to have the larger images, totally your call. But in this case, you can see that um, well, right now it's only showing the pillow image, but we can also include attachments. Okay, and I'll take that off. So this is what it looks like, whoops. And actually this is not numbered correctly because that's a clone. So let's figure out what the deal is. You can see that it's not following the numbering system that we have here. So um, that's because it's a 7A. Do you see that? So I do want to make sure, and that, that these are things that you would catch as you work in the system, okay? Basically, I cloned it. I didn't go back and fix it. So it is showing up as two yards like uh, the bench fabric. But if, if you look at the notes on the item, I, I specifically say, and I, I encourage 
anybody else doing this to also be sure to use notes use um, these description areas to put any documentation that you might need okay I, I also teach this in the event that you mess up on pricing or anything any of your mistakes that you catch I want you documenting them because chances are somebody else is going to find that that same mistake okay I do I do this all the time so when I'm picking apart projects or looking at job profitability um, know that I will find the mistakes okay and, and I teach designers how to locate these mistakes as well okay and I will uh, do another video for all the um, best practices okay this is your company so you can choose to run and operate it however you wish to do so but um, I'm trying to teach the processes that just are more efficient and they eliminate some of the issues that I see often arise okay, when people call me. So um, going back to this item, this is the original upholstered bench fabric. So I'm going to leave that alone, but I'm, I am going to correct the clone. Okay, And um, that is why some people are afraid to clone because you can see that we numbered it. Oops, let me... I think I numbered it incorrectly here anyways so this is 6a so this should be 6b and that is why it didn't um, it didn't show up as a first component correctly and you can see that we also still have the side mark from the other uh, fabric okay so um, this should only be for one yard because the total was uh, for uh, three yards so I would change the, the note on this one is for the bench. Okay, you just want to keep accurate notes. I like to think of it as a way for your work to represent you when you're not there to represent yourself. Okay, so when people are looking at things and reviewing the project, I, I like to see this. And I typically choose to show notes. So if there's anything that somebody wants me to know, I, I then can see it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and change the freight price because chances are for three yards of fabric we're not looking at at 80 bucks but because um i want to keep it consistent with the uh other item the other fabric item i'm going to go ahead and just make it at 40. Okay, and that makes a little more sense now um so i'm going to pull up this proposal one more time and show you once again about the first component okay and here you can see that it is showing all the items you can see the price okay i'm gonna go ahead and make it first component and make it smaller um, but i will want the attachments so we can see the fabric as well so that's how you would do that so do you see how um this pillow now is just a single item component um proposal but it is showing the amounts for both the components okay that's unclear i i recommend uh pulling this information up in the user guide the user guide is up here okay i will continue to point that out as we move along but that is the gist of creating a proposal setting up all the items okay if i wanted to send it out to my client you can see that it now pre-populates the uh, predetermined message that we put in earlier okay if i wanted to change that at this time i still could it doesn't have to be but it just helps to eliminate the typing okay so i am going to cancel i'm not going to really send it to anybody okay but i wanted to show you why i specifically uh, tell everybody to name their proposals because when you have a lot of items in here and I will kind of move to the uh, proposal tab okay so from here you're gonna go to projects and you're gonna just go to proposals okay now without me going in and opening all these things you can see it's pretty easy to follow along I can find that I don't have to open each one of these up when people forget to name their proposals what happens is now you're stuck having to open it and going okay what it, what is this for okay this gives you the the labels already and remember how i also said 
to be sure to name it generically. I also like you to include the room if, if you can. I mean, I always do, but that's because if I needed to search or if I cloned or move items around from project to project just because I set it up under the wrong person or, or whatever the case may be, I, ha I can easily type in just foyer and that will pull up any proposal, doesn't matter the client, and it will pull up everything with the words foyer. So now that we've created all the proposals for this client, we are going to want to send the proposals to the client either individually as a bulk uh, PDF or through the client portal. Okay, now, as you can see right now, we haven't sent <clears throat> anything to the client, but I will go ahead and show you what that looks like in order for us to do. I'm going to go ahead and select the proposals. If we didn't want to send all for some reason, we obviously would just deselect the ones that we don't want. Okay. Um, and what I will do in this case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, send these proposals out. I'm going to go ahead and select single component. And I'm going to reduce um, the image to 200. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go ahead and select next. You'll see that what happens here is it goes ahead and fills in the email addresses based on our company-wide settings. Okay, and this is the standard uh, verbiage that we chose to select when sending out proposals. Okay, um, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and um, add additional um, additional uh, notes here. I can revise it and just remove all the um, verbiage here and use whatever I want to use. However, I'm going to go ahead and stick with the current settings. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and select send email, and you'll see that it now warns you that the proposal will become publicly visible. I'm going to go ahead and send the email anyways. And when we do that, it does mark all of the uh, proposals as email. Okay, you can now see that. So now that I have sent out the PDF of the proposals, you can see that it is marked. Right. The alternative to that in sending the client portal to the client is that the client portal will show the most updated version of each proposal. Meaning if we went ahead and prepared this proposal, but then I went in after we sent it out to the client and I made changes of any kind, um, the version that the client will open if they're accessing it through the client portal will be the most recently updated or the most accurate um, update. Okay, If you send it as a PDF, it obviously just sends the PDF as it was when we uh, went to create the, the single PDF or the bulk. Okay, Now, I will show you what that looks like to give them access to the client portal. You're going to projects, client portal. And you can see that right now it's pretty blank, but we can select our project slash client. And we are gonna just go ahead and click Client Jones. You're gonna see that it's coming from me. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, select this particular one. Okay. So right now there is no standard verbiage because we didn't um, put any when we created uh, the client defaults or the com uh, company wide defaults. Okay, so I went ahead and just po auto populated um, a little generic flip to send to the client with this access to the client portal. Okay, and you can see that um, it's warning you that uh, we can change you know things that are in here and it will. Um, kind of be displayed throughout. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and send this to the client. And you can now see that it's sent. Um, if they go ahead and access it, you'll will be able to see that access was enabled and granted and all that good stuff. Now, from this area, I just want to make sure that uh, we're all on the same page, that you can designate what can and can't happen. If for some reason you didn't want them to 
um, approve things or anything like that. I, I don't know why you wouldn't want them to, but in any case, um, they're never going to be able to access the vendor if that's what you're scared of. Um, I am very mindful of the way I set things up um, as explained when we were setting up items and make sure to make things not Googleable. Is that the word? Okay. So um, this is basically just uh, settings for the client portal access. Okay, so I'm going to just close this and leave it as that and um, continue on.